Over the last year, I've recorded quite a few videos around playing solo RPGs, and I've had some really good discussion in the YouTube comments, which you can find below. Every once in a while, I come across a comment, though, that looks like this. Or like this one, that says, The top mistake is playing solo to begin with. Instead of doing that, download the Meetup application instead. Find a game group, meet real people, make new friends, play a real game face-to-face -face around a table, and socialize. I wanted to talk a little bit about today, in this video, why I play solo RPGs. I got three main reasons why I play solo RPGs, and I will cover those in this video, and I'd love to hear why you play solo RPGs in the comments below. Before that, though, I kind of wanted to address the attitude of comments like this. It seems odd to me that somebody would go out of their way to post a comment like this, because there's tons of activities that people do every single day by themselves. These activities might include browsing on their phone. They might include watching a show or a movie on Netflix. They might even include playing a computer game. These are all activities that can also be enjoyed with other people. And so whether somebody is enjoying some, doing something by themselves or with other people, it really shouldn't matter as long as nobody's getting hurt. And it's curious to me why often solo board games and especially solo RPGs are sometimes put in this weird area of the hobby that some people like to try and gatekeep when all these other activities also can be enjoyed solo or with friends. So I just want to, wanted to address how odd it is that these comments kind of appear from time to time when everybody has activities that they enjoy by themselves or with other people and, and playing a solo RPG is no different than watching a movie or, or doing something like that. So anyways, I really want to focus though in this video on why I play solo RPGs because there are reasons why I play solo RPGs and there are reasons why I play RPGs with the multiple playgroups that I play with. Now, the first reason why I play solo RPGs is because it is so much easier to schedule. Just last week, one of the games that I'm playing in got canceled and pushed to next week. That's frustrating. I put my entire evening aside to go play with the group about 15 minutes before I was about to leave, I got a text, somebody was sick, I got another text, they had a rough day at work, had some things they had to follow up on, and suddenly, I didn't have anything to do that night. That's a bummer. This happens pretty frequently when you're in a game group, there's nothing you can do about it, people's lives will get in the way of gaming, it just happens, but when you play a solo RPG, that doesn't happen. When I set aside an evening to play a solo RPG, I can ensure that I'm going to be able to play because it's dependent on nobody else. Not only that, but I don't have to leave the house. I have a family, my kids go asleep before I do, and so when my kids are asleep, if my wife is away, I have to be in the house. I can't leave, so I can play a solo RPG. I cannot go somewhere else to play an RPG with friends. And so scheduling is so much easier, it's so much faster too. When I sit down at my table or my desk, I can start playing immediately and I can stop whenever I want. I don't really need to be reliant on anyone or anything else. I can just get going. And that is probably the first reason why I play solo RPGs. It's just a little bit easier to schedule. I can find little areas during the day or the evening where otherwise I wouldn't be able to play a game where I can. So that's the first reason why I play solo RPGs. The second reason is because I love learning and exploring new games. I have a lot of friends that are gamers. A lot of them love to play one type of game. I have some friends who play Super Smash Brothers a lot. I have some friends, friends who have played every single version of Pokemon and they continually replay things like Pokemon Red or Pokemon Silver. I have friends that play the newest AAA titles and that is it. These friends love gaming probably more than I do on some levels, on some levels but very few friends that I've found enjoy learning new games thinking about game design and understanding what makes games good as opposed to what makes games bad. And these are all things that I love to do, and to do that I like to play new games. And so that is the second reason why I play solo RPGs. It's hard to find other people who are that interested in trying new games this frequently. I have a few friends who do that. We do have a game night once a month where we go play new games. I have a few RPG friends who like new games. We get together and I will sometimes present a new game to them. But it's not always, uh, not all the groups that I play with have um, people in them that enjoy playing those new games. 
Uh, one other thing about this, when you play a new game, the chance of having a bad experience or an experience that's just okay goes up. I remember one game in particular about a year ago, we tried it out for the first time. It was like an archaeology game. You were kind of exploring these ancient ruins in an RPG type uh, setting type game. And it started off fun. And then it was, it just fell flat. There wasn't enough mechanics in the game to make it seem interesting. And very, very quickly, the game went off the rails. And within an hour, we realized, hey, this game experience isn't for us. We ended up stopping the session. We ended up just hanging out the rest of the night. It was fun. Not everybody, though, wants to commit two to three hours to an evening with the chance that you'll only play a not great game for your group for about an hour and then you'll go do something else for a few hours. So that's another reason why a lot of people don't like playing new games is, you know, if I get together some friends for a game of fifth edition, I guarantee we're going to have a good time. If I get together with some friends for a game of Pendragon, I don't know if the gaming group's going to like it. I will. I don't know if the gaming group is. So that's another reason why um, it's another reason why I like playing new games, but other people in my gaming groups don't. Now, the third reason why I like solo RPGs is because there are gaming experiences that I find extremely enjoyable, incredibly fun, that I want to do. I want to experience. Other people may not. A good example I just brought up is Pendragon. I don't see how in the world Pendragon isn't like one of the top 10 RPGs out there. I think it's absolutely incredible. But after talking with lots and lots of people about Pendragon, I very much understand it is not for everybody. I can see the reaction to people when I'm explaining the joy I'm having playing this game, and I can see them and their faces, and they're happy for me, but they're not interested in joining me in my Pendragon experience. I get that. So I don't have a group to play Pendragon with, so I go play Pendragon solo. Same thing with my Czech-inspired alchemist setting that I like to kind of build in my game book. Who is going to want to sit down and build a game in a world with me in historical, semi-historical Czech Republic with the alchemist setting as a backdrop? I think for some of you it might sound fun, but for my regular gaming group, Nobody's going to take me up on that. That's just something that I enjoy, I like to sit down and do, and nobody else does that I game with, and that's just fine. I have a ton of fun playing that game by myself. Same thing with game design. I do have a game design hobby business. You can check out the links below. A lot of the games that I play are play tests or concept tests just to see if a game is fun. Nobody I know is going to want to sit down and do that with me. It's just something fun that I like to do by myself, and I'm okay with that. So overall, these are all the reasons why I play solo RPGs by myself. I like to play them because it's easier to schedule, and I can fit them into these small windows during the day or the evening when otherwise I wouldn't be able to play an RPG. I like to experience new games, and it's not a lot of other people honestly like to do that, and so it's a way for me to play other games and play new games without having to drag my group along if they're not necessarily interested. And ultimately, I get to have the experiences and the fun that is tailored specifically for me and my tastes, and I don't necessarily have to consider other parts of the game that might be fun for other people. I can just do what's going to be fun for me, and I can move on. And so those are the reasons why I play solo RPGs similar to how other people might watch a movie that they're interested by themselves, read a book that they're interested by themselves, or play a video game or a computer game that they're interested by themselves. I wanted to share that with all of you. Thanks for watching. Take a look at the comments below and let me know why do you play solo RPGs? What makes it fun for you? And I'll see you in the next video.